okay by now the students should be should have a very good understanding on the uh, bending moment diagram at least because the shear force diagram will be used in uh, chapter 7 but for the remaining of chapter 6 we need to have a good understanding on the bending moment diagram all right so if you don't still don't understand how or you are not you, you don't really understand the bending moment diagram you should go back and try to do the exercises on bending moment diagram right so we go to 6.3 which is bending deformation of a straight member so basically what happened is here <coughs> if there is a straight member like this right and you draw something like this okay you bend it you see it's bend shape now so can you see that actually this shape the white shape here that you draw you drew before it will change as well you see that actually the, the bottom part it shrinks isn't it become shorter the top part it becomes longer while on the other hand the middle part it will remain straight it will remain unchanged right so these are these are the the, assumption, uh, the assumptions of bending deformation for a straight member for a straight member for instance beam right so the first assumption is plane section remains plane right this plane section if you cut plane section will be remain plane so that's the first assumption the second assumption is length of longitudinal axis remains unchanged so this the one that i said before the, the middle one the middle line will remain unchanged the third one is plane section remains perpendicular to the longitudinal axis all right and the uh, fourth one in plane distortion of section is negligible why this is important because later on we are going to apply a flexure formula so we need to do these assumptions and we have to bear in mind that actually the flexure formula has these assumptions so it's not really kind of accurate you have to make assumption assumptions all right Okay, this is the way to derive the uh, the normal strain here. All right. So this the normal strain for this, it is given by this equation. Okay, if you know the maximum strain, hmm, and then the any max any strain epsilon y will be related by this formula. All right, minus y over c. Y is this length from the neutral axis to any point all right so y equal to zero at the neutral axis right and then c is the maximum distance c c is very important we're going to use this c again all right and epsilon max is the maximum strain right now we go to the final part of this chapter which is the flexure formula so before we so what is flexure formula i see this flex flexural formula you want to relate m with the corresponding sigma all right the bending internal bending moment m with the bending stress or normal stress here due to the bending moment you want to relate this these two how actually uh bending stress is related to the m all right so first we have to make assumption that material behaves in a linear elastic manner so that Hooke's law can be applied which is for 1D it is sigma equals to E epsilon alright so if you consider like that then basically you can expand the epsilon the this, uh, this strain normal strain to become something like this alright y over c sigma mx because uh, i mean uh, with the e the e as well okay and then you do the derivation and then these two formulas are the most important all right you have this maximum bending stress sigma max to be mc over i while the bending stress is minus my over i why there is minus and we'll see at this uh, figure okay so what is mean by that what is m what is c what is i what is y 
So M is internal bending moment, alright? At any section, at any point that you cut before. Okay. The C, this is your neutral axis. I hope you still remember your neutral axis. C is the biggest distance. See? Biggest distance C. Alright. Y is the intermittent distance. I mean Y can be Y not can be Y is zero at neutral axis here. Hmm? And then it goes positive upwards to maximum value, which is C, isn't it? Same goes here from zero, y goes zero, uh, all the way down to be negative value. Alright? That's why for y uh, so for this formula, sigma equals to minus my over i, there is a minus here. Why is that so? Because if y is positive going upwards from the neutral axis, the value of the bending stress will be negative. Why is that so? Remember our assumption on the sign convention of the bending stress? The bending, the bending moment and bending stress will be positive at the bottom, negative at the top, which means that tension at the bottom, compression at the, at the top. Okay? Same goes to the minus y. Y is 0 here. So, M, uh, sorry, the bending stress is 0 at the entry axis. And then, will be going negative 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 and then if you put negative y in this equation so the bending stress will be positive isn't it so the you can see that actually the bottom part the below below neutral axis the bending stress is positive All right so oh okay another one i what is i what is this i i is Second moment of area or moment of inertia. Alright. So here you're going to use I, moment of inertia. You remember that in the last chapter you use J, polar moment of inertia, isn't it? For circular member in torsion. Alright. Here you use I, moment of inertia. This is polar moment of inertia in chapter 5. This is I for chapter 6. Alright. And chapter 7 as well. We're going to use I as well. Okay, we go to uh, example 5. We go to problem 652. We go to problem 656. We go to problem 658. Uh, and that's the end of this chapter. You need to do more exercises on this. Alright? Okay, thank you.